So there are two kinds of there are two kinds of people. There are uh, sonnet people and there are Ethernet people. So the sonnet is a is a WAN and Ethernet's a LAN. And sonnet is organized. Its its quark is the 64 kilobit per second DS0 voice circuit, and the quark of the Ethernet is IP packets. And, and telcos do sonnet, and computer companies do Ethernet, and uh, Sonnet's been plugging along at 4x per generation, and Ethernet's been zipping along at 10x per generation, and here we are all together at 10 gig. And these two technologies, these two worldviews, have been playing tic-tac-toe. So imagine the tic-tac-toe box, LAN, MAN, WAND, the columns, and then the rows would be voice, video, and data, or more accurately, telephone, television, and data. And in, in the beginning of this game, Ethernet occupies the lower left. It's uh, LAN data, and Sonnet is in the upper right playing WAN telephone. And that was the game some years ago, and now Sonnet and Ethernet have been playing tic-tac-toe. And the reason they've been playing tic-tac-toe is that the traffic facing these networks has been growing, as you just heard from Dr. Paul, and it's been converging, which is sort of secret. Uh, the growth in the internet traffic has far outstripped the growth in the telephone traffic. Isn't it? Maybe telephone traffic may be negative growth by now. And, and then there's this convergence, voice, video, and data, or more accurately, telephone, television, and data. And that convergence is occurring. And how is it occurring? It is not occurring the way we thought it would occur with ISDN. You remember ISDN? The trick there was to get the voice, video, and data on the same wires, not really converged, just on the same wires. And of course, as you know, ISDN turned out to be too much IS and not enough DN. So we moved past it. And we saw the growth of email and e-commerce and so now recently social networking, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, high-performance computing, enterprise computing, and then the central offices and long-haul networks that serve them. But basically now, the internet is being attacked from three directions, traffic-wise, video, mobile, and embedded. That is, the internet was never designed to handle video traffic, which is now dominating. It was never designed to handle mobile traffic. We were all going to sit at some workstations, and now suddenly we're wandering around with cell phones. And then there's the embedded world, which I'll mention again in a minute. So all of this traffic keeps coming at us, which pushes Sonnet and Ethernet around this tic-tac-toe game that I mentioned earlier. So I'm about to quote George Gilder, who spoke here last night, and he's predicting that by 2015, the Internet will be carrying, in the United States alone, a zettabyte of information. That's 10 to the 21st bytes per second. Um, no, a zettabyte per um, per year. And when I talk about Gilder and I talk about all that traffic, I've noticed in the blog traffic this morning in my hotel room, the blogs now are rife with, with what I would call bubble phobia. See, these people remember that it was Gilder and me and Al Gore and a few other people who touted Ethernet during the 90s, Internet in the 90s, and got there to be a big bubble, which, as I recall, burst around 2000. And so the there are people who suffer from bubble phobia, and the fact that I'm talking about terabit Ethernet really sets them off. So anyway, you're adults, and you're, you're able to evaluate what I'm saying, and if you want to make a bubble, go right ahead, and if you don't, it's up to you. Um, but I'm confident that when we build terabit Ethernet, they will come. They have for 35 years. They're not going to stop now, and you've just heard a list of some of the ways, uh, some of the traffic demands that are going to push us to terabit Ethernet. Uh, once again, the hard question is when. So Ethernet has been proliferating and uh, evolving. And just so you're clear, I don't claim to have invented what we call Ethernet today. The way Ethernet is used today, did you, remember, did you notice how many times Dr. Paul used the word Ethernet? He wasn't talking about anything that I invented, because Ethernet has, you know... In 1982, I said there were people buying Ethernet who I don't know personally. By 1985, there were people inventing Ethernet 
who I did not know personally. So I give all due credit to them. But this thing called Ethernet has been proliferating, and I, I make that uh, point by describing the five prepositions. Ethernet is going up, into, across, over, and down, even today. It's going up in the land, and as you heard, 100 gig next, 10, 100 terabit. It's going into the WAN, that's why I ran into Sonnet, getting into the core network as a, you know, these little gig e ports around and some of these Sonnet thingies. Ethernet's going across. Uh, Gildor again mentioned, called a thing called the telechasm that had developed, the telechasm between the WAN and the LAN, thanks to the local carriers. You know, all you can buy these days is T1, which is pitiful 1.5 megabits per second. Well, give us Ethernet, for Pete's sake. Uh, and Ethernet is going across the telechasm, a development called Carrier Ethernet. And Ethernet is going over the airwaves. You may have heard of Wi-Fi, wireless Ethernet, WiMAX, cell phones. And something akin to Ethernet is now going down into the embedded space. You know, you go from mainframe mini computer, PC, laptop, palm top, what's next? Embedded. So, and there are about 10 billion embedded microcontrollers shipped every year, and the problem is 10 billion. Uh, very few of them are networked, so that's the next frontier, and then we can expect a lot of embedded traffic to come. And Ethernet is those kind of Ethernet ish thoughts are invading that space too. And the reason Ethernet continues to proliferate is because it's been winning. I mean, it's embarrassing. Um, back at Xerox Park, there was an evil alternative called the XNet, which it took us a year to kill. And then there was OmniNet in the marketplace for PC networking out of somewhere in San Jose, California. It took us a couple of years to kill that one. It was Hyper Channel out of the University of Minnesota, you know, up there in um, St. Paul. And then there was the ArcNet. And then there was the um, General Motors token bus out of Detroit. And then there was the IBM token ring out of Raleigh. And there was FDDI and SCSI and all ATM. And you know, at the secret Ethernet meetings that I attend where we conspire, um, we're after InfiniBand, Fiber Channel, and of course, Sonnet is uh, on the list to kill.